These are not traditional enchiladas verdes. They are merely the vaguely green enchiladic interpretations of a gringo who is grateful for the many wonderful things Mexico has contributed to his country. I start with olive oil in a pot and four chicken thighs. These are skinless, boneless. That's the easiest, but you could totally use bone in and just take the bones out after you braise them. You could use legs. I would not use breasts. I think braised white meat is stringy and dry. This is going to be a luscious, moist filling. Just going to fry them up until brown, and while I'm waiting, I'll chop up a big onion. We're going to cook this until falling apart, so don't worry about getting it fine. I do quarter moons, and I have no idea if that's a thing people actually say. These things always really stick on me, so I have to scrape them off with a metal spatula. It really doesn't matter because, again, we're going to cook these until falling apart, so it's fine if they get beat up now. Okay, once I've got some nice color on the thighs, I take them out so that the onions can get some really serious heat and fry up brown. Usually enough water comes out of the onion to deglaze the pan and keep anything from burning on the bottom. Maybe because I was distracted with the camera, I had some fond there that was about to burn, so I had to deglaze it with a little white wine. You could obviously use water. That boiled off really fast, and then I could get back to frying my onions. When they're starting to look brown, I put in my spices to let them toast in the hot oil. I think that really deepens their flavor. I'm just doing a ton of cumin and black pepper and a little paprika and a pinch of salt. You could use more things. I would normally put in some coriander, but I was out. All right, now those onions are sweet and have deep roasted flavor. Chicken goes back in and time to add liquid. I do like half white wine, half water. We're going to reduce this braising liquid to a glaze, and the wine gives that a meat candy finish. Yum. But if I go full wine, it's just too sweet. All right, enough liquid to almost cover everything. Cover it up and reduce the heat to a simmer. Then get the oven heating up to maybe 400 Fahrenheit or even hotter. All right, green chilies for salsa verde. These are just jalapenos, and rather than use a couple of whole ones, I use four but scrape out the seeds and the ribs. That's where the spiciness lives. I'm more interested in getting pepper flavor than heat. I can add hot sauce to my plate later. Get rid of all that. All right, tomatillos. This is a pound and a half. You just pull off that papery husk, and then I just cut them in half. Here's another onion. I'll peel it, and then I think you want to cut it up into pieces that are small enough to actually get cooked in the oven, but not so small that they'll burn, like so. Then a lime. I use a whole lime, but I think I like my food more acidic than most people do, so maybe you just do half a lime. Then I get a big, wide pan, throw in some oil, and then all this wonderful green stuff gets coated. That's pretty. Yes, I like to roast my lime with the veggies. I think it tastes good. In the oven it goes, and then I will just peel, but not chop, a few cloves of garlic. I'll put that in later. It might burn if I put it in now. All right, it's been like half an hour, and here's our chicken. When I pick it up, I can see that it's just starting to fall apart. That's where I like it. I don't like to let my chicken get too soft, because by the time it bakes in the final dish, it can just turn into mush, which I don't like. Nor do I like for my chicken to be shredded into hairy little strands. I prefer to grab my knife and just cut it up into chunks. This will naturally fall apart and shred a bit later as we stir it into the sauce. So I say cut it up into a little bit bigger chunks than you want in the end. Speaking of the sauce, here's our braising liquid, and I love to just turn the heat up high underneath it and reduce that down to a sweet, sticky glaze. Let's check on our salsa. It's safe to throw in the garlic now. I'll just stir this up. You can see the veggies getting a little bit of color. I actually don't want too much. I like a middle ground between those deep, dark, roasted salsa verdes and those bright vegetal ones that are basically raw. Keep an eye on that glaze. As it gets really thick, it's likely to stick to the pan like that. I had to scrape that off with a wooden spoon before it burned. And there you go. Insanely delicious stuff. Throw in the chicken and stir it around a little. You can see it starting to shred a bit there. Time to grate some cheese, and I go with eight ounces of a melting cheese like Monterey Jack. I prefer that to the traditional queso frescos that just kind of sit there and stare at you when you get them hot. All right, here's that salsa after maybe 20 minutes, and I really don't like to cook it any more than that. Everything should still be half raw. I use my tongs to just grab the lime and squeeze it in. Again, that's probably more lime juice than you want. Make sure to get rid of those before you puree this. I would love to tell you to just use an immersion blender because I think those are so convenient, but the chunks are just too big for it. This is a job for a food processor, unfortunately. Big bunch of cilantro goes in at this stage, and traditionally some water. I prefer to have a drier texture and a more concentrated flavor in my enchiladas, so no water for me. And you certainly don't have to get that perfectly smooth. I like some chunks. Back into that wide sauce or fry pan it goes, and I'll put a little bit of it into my filling to brighten it up. Also, half of my cheese goes into the filling. That'll be melty and delicious and kind of bind everything together. 
Then you can mix that up for a final time and taste it for seasoning. I don't season the salsa because the filling is a little salty, the cheese is salty, and the tortillas are salty. Yes, I use flour tortillas. You could use corn, but I use flour because gringo. Seven inches or large taco size is perfect for fitting into a greased seven by 11 inch baking pan. All right, here's my assembly procedure. I think this works really well. Taco goes into the pan with the warm salsa in it. Just a quick dunk, and this is to make them flavorful and more importantly, pliable. But too long in there and it'll start to dissolve. Quick dunk. I lay that into my baking sheet and spoon in a line of filling. Be careful about overfilling. I think it should always feel like you're not putting in quite enough. Roll it up, seam side down, and scoot it to the edge, and then repeat. Quick dunk in the salsa, over to the baking pan, spoon in a modest line, roll, seam side down on the bottom, and repeat. When I get toward the end, I just kind of build them on top of their brothers. This minimizes dishes. I usually get in eight, but sometimes I've got enough filling for one or two more. Rest of the salsa gets spooned on top, smooth it out, and then rest of the cheese gets sprinkled on top. I used to bake this covered and then uncover it. Now I do it uncovered the whole way. Oven is still at 400. And I think you just bake it until you like the color of the cheese. That was 20 minutes. I don't like to cook this too long. The tortillas just kind of dissolve. Look how pretty that is, because it won't be pretty for long. No real way to make a single enchilada on a plate look nice. Though you can rain on a little forest of cilantro leaves, and I do some hot sauce on the plate, and that is just one of the most satisfying dinners that I know how to make. Yeah, it kind of looks like a car accident in there, but that sticky braised dark meat in that sweet glaze is just out of control good. After I eat, I tend to just let the pan cool down and then stick it into the fridge, because like lasagna, I think this is even better when you heat it back up in the oven the next day. 